and welcome to another WJCA level physics question. This is from unit 1 in May 2013. It was question 5. It's a question based upon energy conservation. And the question indeed starts by asking us to state the principle of conservation of energy, which is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. only changed from one form to another, or words to that effect. Next, the question refers to a bobsleigh run in Norway, which has got a curving track of overall length 1.4 kilometers from start to finish. And during a run, the bobsleigh starts from rest and drops to a vertical height h of 120 meters. And assuming that there are no resistive forces acting, we've got to show that the maximum possible speed of the bobsleigh at the finish line is given by v equals root 2 gh. Well, it should be obvious already that this is an energy question. So what we're looking at here is the fact that as the bobsleigh goes down the hill, its gravitational potential energy that it starts with transfers to kinetic energy at the bottom of the slope. Formula for gravitational potential energy is mgh or mg delta h. Formula for kinetic energy is half mv squared. The v's can can sorry the m's can cancel, so we've got that v squared is equal to two times gh, moving the, the uh, two to the other side of the equation. And then V is simply square root of 2GH, as was required. And hence, we've got to calculate the maximum possible speed of a bobsleigh at the finish line. So we just substitute the values in. 2 times 9.81 multiplied by the 120 meters drop. That's square root of all of that. So that gives us 48.5 meters per second. Again, I'm going to be using this answer later in the question, so I'm going to store that in a memory on my calculator. Next part of the question, due to resistive forces, the actual speed at the finishing line is 20% less than the speed, the maximum possible speed. And we've got to give two examples of resistive forces acting on the bobsleigh. So we could talk about air resistance. And we could talk about friction, but I'd like us to be sort of fairly clear what we mean by friction. So I'll just say friction between, uh, say, the sleighs, runners, and the snow. Next, by taking the resistive forces into account, we've got to calculate the kinetic energy of the bobsleigh at the finish. And the mass of the bobsleigh and riders is 280 kilograms. Well, kinetic energy is half mv squared. So half times 280 times, now here remember that we've lost 20% of the velocity at the bottom or the speed at the bottom. So we still got 80% of that maximum speed. So what I'm going to put in this brackets is 0 0.8 times that 48.5 that we worked out earlier squared. When we put those figures in, we end up with about 211 kilojoules. 211,000 joules. Hence, determine the mean resistive force experienced by the bobsleigh from start to finish. So here we're basically using the work energy theorem, where we're going to find out how much energy was lost by the bobsleigh and equate that amount of energy lost to the work done by frictional forces. So what we've got is that the, the difference in energy, the energy lost, is going to be the energy at the start, which we could work out from, for example, a half times the 280 times the original 48.5 squared. And we're going to be taking away that 211,000 joules that we just worked out in the last answer. The initial energy could also be calculated from the initial potential energy, gravitational potential energy, using mgh. So let's work this out on our calculators. And the difference we get here is about 119 kilojoules. 
so for some reason doesn't want to write so let's try that again as I mentioned earlier that's equal to the work done by frictional forces work done is given by W equals FX or more precisely W equals FX cos theta but here cos theta is going to be minus 1 because the angle between the direction of motion of these uh, bobsleigh and the direction of the resistive force is 180 degrees and cos of 180 is minus 1 so as so long as we realize that the 119 kilojoules that we've just worked out was a, a loss of energy and hence negative we should fairly easily be able to find the resistive force by taking 119 kilojoules and dividing it by the distance that the frictional force is acted over which was this 1.4 kilometer length from start to finish along the track and with that we get 84.8 newtons or 85 newtons would be fine and that's going to be an average resistive force because the frictional forces and air resistance forces will increase as the speed of our bobsleigh finishes but we're not asked to find a, a total resistive force or resistive force at the end just the average resistive force so thank you very much for listening please remember to like and subscribe and ask any questions in the comments below the video goodbye